Hi everyone, my name is Ursula Wallenberg and I live in Springfield, Missouri. And I'm going to be working on a fun black and white painting in watercolor and we're also going to use graphite pencil, gesso, and a little bit of gouache. So this is uh, one I did a while, a while back. We may do just the flower is just a little bit different, but overall it's going to be pretty much the same. I also print, printed it out in black and white just so we, you know, we can see where the shadows are and, and everything. So that helps. And so this is a nice study of uh, contrast between black and white um, shadows, shapes, and then adding a pop of color to that and seeing the contrast between the two. So you can have either, you can use a uh, Lyra pencil, which is what I am going to be using. If you do not have the, the Lyra or Lyra uh, graphite pencil, you can also use a Stabilo All pencil, and this one is black. You can use gray, just whatever you have. And when you go into the tighter areas, I might be using a little bit more of the pencil, just because this has got a, you know, a thicker point to it. I did sharpen it just by rubbing it on a piece of paper. So I have already drawn her on here just a little bit to get to save a little bit of time and just to get started. She does have a little bit of an ear here. So this is just a regular 8B pencil and I'm working on a smooth surface watercolor paper which is 140 pound and it's hot press. So it's just smoother. You can use whatever paper you have. I like to use this when I'm working with the graphite and the pencils because it, I don't have the grain, you know, as much to work with because it's very smooth. So, and I have it anchored down so it doesn't curl because it will curl some, especially when we walk, work into the background. So I'm also going to be using gesso. And I'm going to take a little plate or you can use a palette, whatever you know you have on hand. And I'm going to put some of that gesso onto my little lid. And I've got two waters going, one for my gesso and my gouache and the other one for watercolor. I don't want my colors to get muted as I go along. So we're going to start with the graphite pencil and I'm just going to start going into some of the darker areas. Just kind of be loose. There's no right or wrong. I'm going to start with the hair. Don't worry about line making. That just I think adds to your art and makes it more your own. I do love to do line making and I like the blunt cut of her hair. The photo that I used, the girl had a nice blunt hairstyle and that's what I liked about it. And then adding the flowers, the sinuous lines to that, you know, straight jaw. And The blunt cut of the hair, I think, will add to our overall design. So I'm just going to be putting in that hair. I'm not going to put as much over here because I'm going to start putting flowers in later. I'm not going to put the flowers in with the graphite. So maybe I'll go ahead and put those in right now. And that way I know where to go with my graphite. And I just started one right here. And I'm just taking, you know, my pencil back away from and just twirling it, coming down, adding another one, overlapping my petals, some are larger, some are smaller, just kind of, you know, there's really not much thought, just enjoy 
being loose. Also add a few. I got that line from the hair there, so I might put a, a leaf there. And here's one more I'm going to put over here just to balance this side out. Okay, so we have that. Just kind of getting my pencil and getting into some of those areas. Okay, I'm going to take now, I'm going to be using my graphite again. And start coming into her face to the top of the eye. I want that rather dark because that's her lash line. And right above that, her lid. When I do some shadows, I'm going to be using the side of my pencil. I don't want a line later. I don't want cross -hatch hatching to show, so I'm going to be using the side in my darker areas and shading some of that. I'm going to just be loose, have fun, keeping the shapes and shadows in mind. I don't want that to be too strong. And then of course the upper lip is always darker. jawline and cheek is angular so I'm going to just emphasize that a little bit more here and then shade underneath Here is darker right at the part line. Bring a piece of hair down if you want to. face a little bit too narrow there. Okay. I think we're good. So now I can start. I'm going to take this angle brush and I'm wetting it. I'm wiping a little bit of the excess off on my paper towel. And the reason I'm using the gesso with the graphite is when I do add color later, I won't be picking up that graphite and dirt making my color muddy looking. So, that is the reason. If I use just straight
you know, water, I'll be able to pick that graphite up again. And not only does it act as kind of a resist, but it also gives its, the surface a little more tooth. that will be make our drawing even better I love this process I think it's very soothing and relaxing just pulling those shadows down I'm just going to pick some of that while well, it's still wet a little bit in that graphite onto these flowers that are going to have a little shadow behind them. And anytime we do a portrait or any painting, all of it starts with shapes. So this gives us a good beginning. And of course, each time you do one of these, like, you know, this isn't going to be exactly like the first one. I don't, you do the same thing and somehow it comes out different anyway. shadow under that nostril on this side. And if you find you have more control with a smaller brush, or a round brush, you know, by all means, use it. I'm kind of losing my shape here, which I'll have to put it back in. But right now, we're just pretty much working more on shadows. And then we can tweak those shapes as we need to. And I like that open mouth, that semi-open mouth. It's something I don't do very often. I don't like to do a big smile. But I do like just that little bit of opening on the mouth. I'm going to fix my nose with my graphite pencil because I've got more control. Well, it's not graphite pencil, I'm sorry. It's a Stabilo pencil. And the shape of that mouth a little bit. If you go in with your graphite, when it's wet, you're going to get much, th um, that's already kind of dry, but you'll get a, a sharper and darker
line. So just keep that in mind if you don't want that. Kind of lost your ear on this one, didn't I? <laughs> Let's put that back in. Now I'm just adding white gesso and more full strength to some areas where I felt I had it too dark. If you need a smaller brush then too, just don't be afraid to get that. Just as we're working on these little beginnings. Put some white back in her hair. If you have too much. Okay, so I have that much right now. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to put that aside for now, my pencils. And I'm going to take watercolor paint. And I'm going to be using probably this number six round brush and I'm using neutral tint you can use a, like a you know a neutral gray if you have a, a dark gray and you can use Payne's gray uh, black just goes a little too flat for me and Payne's gray sometimes has too much blue in it so I'm using this neutral tint one of my favorite colors. I'm just strengthening some of those darker areas with your watercolor paint and neutral gray. I'm softening some of my shadows now. They're there, but I'm coming back and making them a little bit softer and more, a little bit more defined. And I put that color on and then just get those soft edges by bringing water back onto my Rinsing my brush and just bringing water onto that area. A 
and those nostrils. Round those out. Right under that lid onto the eye. too much. Try to take that off. And come back with my gesso. So now I'm going to go between dark and light back and forth and just kind of tweak everything so I can add my white gesso. and forth where I need light, where I need dark. I don't want to lose the shape of that chin. I'm getting her face a bit wider and a little less angular. This side of the face is darker. And I'm just paying attention now to the shapes within the shadows. You know, our features are shapes, and then we have shapes within shapes. This one is a little wider all the way around. The hair, I think, got a little wide. Just want to kind of add some different hair going different directions. Okay, so she is ready now for the background. So I'm just going to take a large brush. This is a nice big number 30 round brush. I'm just going to take and wet my background. And I'm not going to worry about going a little bit into the hair. Bring it around. We're going to be using two different colors. It's always a good idea to have a spray bottle around and activate those colors so you don't have to work so hard at them. And I'm going to take shell pink, bring that into the background, bring that around onto her flesh tone areas. Bring a little bit over here. Go ahead and 
rinse my brush and then turquoise. Design. I just like things to be pulled together when you're painting. And if you don't like it or you think it's too dark, you can always just come in and dab a little bit, and it just adds a little bit of texture to the background, too. I'm also going to take a little bit of quinacridone gold and place that right into this area here. Almost like creating a halo around her, just on one side, the lighter side. And then with that quin, I'm just going to bring that onto the centers of my flowers. Maybe just pull a little bit down on her skin to brighten just a bit. I did not do that in the last one, but I think that it's going to be really bring it, make it pop. And I kind of lost her ear, so you know what? I'm not even going to worry about that ear. Her hair's just gone over that, so we'll just not worry. Then I'm going to take that pink, shell pink, and not water it down too much, kind of bring it a little more less transparent. It's more of an opaque color anyway. And I'm just very loosely just placing that color into those petals. I'm not working on it very hard. I'm not moving my paint around. I don't want to pick up any pencil marks or graphite. So I'm just placing that on, leaving white areas as well. And I'm also, while I have that on my palette, I'm going to just come in to the cheek area, the top of little apples of her cheek, and put a little bit of that on her cheeks, on her nose, and on her lip. And a little bit up on her forehead. And if you want to bring some more down onto the... skin area, the flesh area, that's fine too. That line kind of went across there. It's kind of bothering me. So what we're going to do now is let this dry. And when we come back, we're going to kind of finish it up a little bit. Well, not a little bit. We're going to finish it up, but we're going to work on the face a little bit more and then the flowers. I'm just adding some more white where I, I feel I need it. And if you got too much paint, you know, come back with the white on there. And then we'll work on that. We'll add some pastel. And go from there. 